Hi, I'm Mr. Simons and in this video we're going to look a little bit more at external stability and we're going to look in particular about how do Australia's net foreign liabilities, uh, NFL for short, nothing to do with the good game of gridiron, how do Australia's net foreign liabilities affect external stability? Now, before we get started, if you are not too cluey about external stability, you might want to watch this video that is being linked to right now. That's an excellent place to start to understand what external stability is and what are the components of external stability. For the rest of you, you're here because you know and are excited about external stability and I praise you for that. So what we're going to look at is what are net foreign liabilities and how do they affect Australia's external stability? Do they make it better? Do they make it worse? Do they make... Okay, so here we go. Remember, we're looking at how do net foreign liabilities affect external stability, uh, which is also helpfully repeated right here. Okay, so if you're thinking about, well, what do we mean by this? What we're really looking at is how does the size of Australia's net foreign liabilities, how does that improve or worsen external stability? So how much does the money Australia owe overseas? How much does that make Australia's relationships with other countries? in a financial sense, not a romantic sense. In a financial sense, does it make it more manageable, less manageable? What is the story? So in short, if we're trying to kind of get an idea about where I'm going with this video, the larger Australia's foreign liabilities, so the higher they get, the worse Australia's external stability it is. The worse Australia's ability to manage those financial relationships sustainably with other countries. It's kind of the basic point of what we're looking at today. Okay, let's get into it a little bit deeper by defining what the hell we mean by net foreign liabilities. Okay, so here's something I prepared earlier. So the first thing we should be aware of is this term net foreign liabilities and net just meaning overall. So net foreign liabilities, we might abbreviate that to NFL and what we're talking about with net foreign liabilities is that Australia's financial obligations to the rest of the world. So essentially what I mean here when I say Australia's financial obligations to the rest of the world, what I'm saying here is what Australia owes to the world minus, right, that's a minus sign, minus what the rest of the world owes Australia. So net foreign liabilities is essentially what Australia owes to the rest of the world minus what the rest of the world owes to Australia. So if I'm thinking about it overall, this concept of net foreign liabilities, that equals net foreign debt plus net foreign equity. Net foreign debt plus net foreign equity. And just to remind ourselves, when we talk about foreign debt, foreign debt is the amount of money that Australia borrows from overseas, right? And remember that when we take money out, the initial sum has to be repaid plus interest, that kind of thing. If we then talk about foreign equity and just remind ourselves about that, um, foreign equity is looking at overseas investors buying Australian assets or Australian investors buying overseas Assets. And remember that foreign equity is not the same as foreign debt, that these two things are very different. So net foreign liabilities equals net foreign debt plus net foreign equity. Let's have a look at how we break those two things down further. Okay, when we talk about net foreign debt, what we're talking about is the total stocks of loans owed by Australians to foreigners. Sometimes you just read sentences and you're like, can't we just speak a bit more simply? What we're talking about here is this. It's about Australia's debt to overseas sources, right? How much? Let's make it even simpler. 
how much debt Australia owes overseas minus the total stock of loans owed by foreigners to Australians. So minus how much debt others owe to Australia. So the foreign um, nations or investors, how much they owe to Australians. So that's net foreign debt. How much debt Australia owes overseas minus how much debt others owe to Australia. Then if we look at net foreign equity, it's a little bit simpler. The total value of assets in Australia in foreign ownership. I lied, it's not that much simpler. Let's make it simpler. So if we talk about net foreign equity, what we're looking at is the value of Australian assets owned by foreigners minus the total value of assets overseas owned by Australians. Again, not that simple. Minus the value of foreign assets that are owned by Australians. So just be clear, net foreign debt, how much debt Australia overseas minus how much debt others owe to Australia, net foreign equity, the value of Australian assets that are owned by foreigners. So the amount of investment into Australia by foreigners minus the amount of investment overseas by Australians. And remember, when we're going back up that way, remember we talked about so that if we get a situation where say uh, net foreign debt increases or net foreign equity increases, that that will increase net foreign liabilities. So that's one, that's one, that's uh, effect two. So any increase in foreign debt or net foreign, net foreign debt or net foreign equity could increase the value of Australia's net foreign liabilities. But now let's look about, uh, let's look at whether we should even care. Does this even matter? So does this matter? The answer is yes. So if net foreign liabilities increase, and just because I like making the same point over and over again, remember net foreign liabilities. So if we say net foreign liabilities increase, what we're saying is that net foreign debt and or, I love that expression, and or net foreign equity also increase. And that if that happens, let's choose blue, Australia's external stability may worsen. So this is the essential point to make sure this is clear in your notes, that if Australia's net foreign liabilities increase, Australia's external stability, its financial relationships with other countries, that could get worse. So you may then say, hey, Mr. Simons, how could this even happen? How could you let, no, I didn't let it happen. How could this happen? So let's have a look at the two situations. First situation is we'll look at net foreign debt. So what happens is with net foreign debt, let's start with a current account deficit, right? We've got a, a growing current account deficit or in Australia, we have that persistent current account deficit. So what happens is that when we start with the high CAD, which is position one, what we need to do to address that is we need greater capital inflow. So we need to attract more foreign debt, more foreign debt from overseas, right? Because it's foreign debt, which means it comes from overseas. Now, remember, when we increase capital inflows, we are going to increase NPY outflows. And remember that's a debit. So that leads to greater NPY outflows, which is three over here, which will increase the NPY deficit and then lead to a higher CAD. So that becomes number five. So the idea here is that actually, if Australia keeps um, incurring or borrowing money from overseas, foreign investors might get a little worried. They might ask some questions like, they might ask, can Australia repay all of its foreign debt? Can Australia service all of its foreign debt? And if investors get a bit worried about their ability to do that, they're saying that Australia's external stability has worsened. Its financial relationships with other countries are less sustainable. So if the answer is no to the idea, can Australia repay all its foreign debt, can it service? 
then external stability, XTAB, just external stability has worsened and the financial relationships, our ships, just relationship, financial relationships with other countries are less sustainable. So what I'm saying is that if net foreign liabilities increase, if we see an increase in foreign debt, well, that could worsen external stability through this process. You might also say, hey, Mr. Simons, how do we know foreign debt is too high? How do we know that Australia can't manage those liabilities? Um, well, you check the debt servicing ratio for the country. And according to the good people at Comsec, I've taken it right here, that the debt servicing ratio is the ratio of net income on foreign debt, right? Those repayments on foreign debt to the value of Australia's exports of goods and services. So we measure uh, the sustainability or the, the stability of Australia's foreign debt by looking at the debt servicing ratio. That's how we check whether Australia's foreign debt is too high or it's still pretty manageable. Okay, let's look at the next part. So the other part of net foreign liabilities is net foreign equity. Okay, so here we are, we're looking at foreign equity and remember that net foreign liabilities equals net foreign debt, which was covered here, plus net foreign equity. So when we're looking at foreign equity, right, capital inflows so um, let's say capital inflows so credits on australians balance of payments that's an increase in foreign equity so that's an increase in the ownership of australian assets by foreign investors so increase foreign ownership of australian assets let's change colors just to signify the difference if i talk instead about capital outflows that's actually a decrease in foreign equity because that's uh, recorded as debits on Australia's balance payments and that's increasing Australian ownership of foreign assets, right? So if I'm thinking about these two ideas here, what I'm thinking about is that, that if there is an increase in capital inflows in terms of uh, foreign equity, that is going to increase net foreign equity and increase Australia's net foreign liabilities. If there is a reduction in net foreign equity, right, a reduction in foreign investors buying Australian assets, that will reduce Australia's net foreign liabilities. So let's have a look at how this plays out. So if we go here, we know that capital inflows will lead to NPY outflows. And you can see that going back here for foreign debt, but here we're obviously talking about foreign equity. So with foreign equity, the, the income flows out of Australia are about dividends and profits. So the point here is that the more profitable local firms become, right? The more profit they make, the more profit and dividends they send offshore, right? So this will, that will worsen NPY and increase the CAT. So on the basic level here, very basic level, if there is an increase in net foreign equity, this could worsen external stability because more capital inflows will create more NPY outflows. But what I'd like you to think about is this point here, and I'll just put this in blue here, and we'll just put the but, because I want you to go, but, 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 but the businesses are profitable and when we say the businesses we mean the local businesses right the australian businesses so the local australian businesses are profitable so the local economy is actually growing even though net foreign liabilities are going up economic growth is increasing so these npy outflows might not be such an issue because there is increasing economic growth for australia but it could be a problem in the sense that more money is leaving Australia, which could worsen uh, that external stability. So what we're thinking about here is that if net foreign debt or net foreign equity change, how will that affect net foreign liabilities? And how will that affect external stability? Okay, this can be complicated material. So questions in the comments, 
please like if this was useful, dislike if it wasn't useful, engagement is still pretty good for me. Um, tell a friend that I exist and that these videos are out there. And as always, thank you so much for watching.